What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 37 coming on the back on the big win against Arsenal in the last game which did unfortunately see Curtis Jones go down with three of injury. Today we're returning with the final games of the first half of the season, the January transfer window is opening, we've got the FA Cup third round at home to Watford in the Challenge as well and we're starting off with this, the final game of the Champions League group stage which is meaningless as we've already guaranteed top spot. Now, to start today's episode off, something very interesting, I'm simming a game, I know, I know. Oh, look, you'll be thinking, hang on a second, Doxy Boy don't sim games, what's going on here? Well, let me explain why. Um, obviously, there's nothing to play for. We've already guaranteed top spot. We've already guaranteed uh, first place in the group. And I get asked sometimes, what is simming games like? For those that may not play FC, for those that may not play career mode, you might not wonder what simming games is actually like. Well, you've got two options. You've got sim match and quick sim. Now, if you quick sim, it jumps straight to the result. But if you sim the match, what you can do is you can watch like a 2D uh, pitch, if you will. See the game getting played on 2D, just like if you're playing Football Manager, for example, and you're old school like me, you play 2D. Uh, you can see how the game's getting on in 2D, and if you want, you can press the square button on PlayStation. You can jump in, and you would have seen on the 2D screen there, Kay Gordon just received this ball down this right-hand side, and we can carry on the game and play it myself from this current position. Now, if I want, I can also press the Options button, Start button, if, you, if you're old school like me, and you can jump back to the Sim, and it'll go right back to the 2D as from where you are. So it's really, really cool. If you want, you can sim the game and then start playing it from a certain point as Kay Gordon wraps up that move there. I'll take a slight bit of credit for it. <laughs> but there you go. So that's how sim works on, uh, on on career mode. And if you don't want to watch the full game on 2D, you can just go straight to... Where's the end? There we go. Jump to result. Options, then jump to result. And you'll see we won the game by two goals to one. So that's how simming works in career mode. I just prefer to play all the games just because, I don't know, I just do. I like to play all the games. But for those that are curious and do ask me and don't play career mode, that's what simming is like. And uh, they've added that 2D classic view, and it's really, really cool. I'm a big fan of it. So um, we've got the draw for the, uh, for the last 16 as well. But I don't think it's going to come through the news article. So we'll have to get it the old-fashioned way. We'll see who we've got in the last 16 of the Champions League. We'll be taking on... Real Sociedad, the Basque side uh, Spanish team in the first knockout round. So a full list of the groups for you here. Uh, you can see who went through as group winners, who went through as runners-up. It was Juve that came through with us then uh, on the final game. Real Madrid and Arsenal for in Group D. Yeah, there's uh, Sociedad runners up in Group E with Chelsea who tops. Group F, Man City and uh, Benfica. Inter and Barca in Group G. And Group H, Shaw Bayern and PSG Mega 3. So it's Sociedad in the last 16. So first proper game today and it is a Merseyside derby. Everton away at Goodison Park. This is our first fixture as Liverpool manager and it finished 4-4. So looking for more fireworks today. But most importantly, three points. Four points behind Chelsea leading the way. Need to go on a winning run if we are to keep pace with Mauricio Pochettino's side. First game, Everton to the way featuring a Ronaldo regen up top. Come on, Liverpool. Andy down the line. Diaz onto it. Uh, got a man in the middle in Trent. He plays a nice through ball for Cody to run onto. He's in behind. Oh, it's easy. Easy money. Easy money. Simple finish. There we go. Cody Gakpo with the opener. Liverpool lead 90 minutes in. Trent with the nice through ball. Cody with the nice finish. Yeah, he had a slow start this season. Took him four, goals to get, four games to get his first goal, but now he's starting to put the ball in the back of the net on a more semi-regular basis, if you will. Cody with the finish. Liverpool take the lead. I have to say that was not a great game, but a win is a win, and we'll take a Derby Day victory every day of the week. It was only by a goal to nil. Keeps us in touching distance with Chelsea. But I did see during the game they were 3-0 up away against Bournemouth. So the gap will remain at four. They're, they're going to take some stop in this season, man. Pochettino's side's got a bit between their teeth and they've really flown out the blocks this year. Yep, top scorers, best defensive record, hence the best goal difference, most wins and most points on the board. Chelsea off to a flyer this year. Right, following game, Christmas Day. You know I'm an advocate for this. Not realistic, but... I would love Christmas Day football to be a real thing in the future. Fingers crossed, Touchwood, it may well be one day. Crystal Palace at Anfield. Let's make it three wins on the drop. Come on, Liverpool. So I think I mentioned this uh, earlier on in, in the save. It's like, I, you know, I'm, I'm single, uh, unfortunately, if you can tell by now. <laughs> and um, I'm not overly close to my family. So Christmas Day for me, I... Oh, Jack Clark denied by a great save. More often than not, not always, but more often than not, I do spend uh, by myself, which I don't actually hate to be fair. You know, I call my friends on Christmas Day and, uh, and, and, and vice versa. So I have, you know, contact with the outside world per se and I always go for a walk as well. Uh, but I, 
I'm a massive NBA fan, so I, I watch the NBA. There's, there's NBA games on Christmas Day, so I, I love that. It's almost like there's always something there for me. If yours, Cody Gakpo does fire in the opener, and that's what I would love the Premier League to do. It's like for those of us, and granted, there's not that many of us, but for those of us who may not be overly close to their family and are likely to spend it on their own, or for those that may be you know, abroad or away or just can't see their family for whatever reason, it would be nice to have something there, which is like you still feel connected in some way to one of your passions. For me, that is, uh, that is of course, football. And um, hence why I, I, I love when the NBA do their games in the evening, so I've got something to watch before bed, you know. Anyway, 1-0 uh, early, Cody Gakpo right now. He's, he's recaptured his former last season after a sluggish start, and he's really thriving now. Ballon d'Or worthy form. Canate, 3-2 Clark. And right that inside. Nicely done, nice triangle move. I keep running, Cody. It's a great ball by... Oh, what a ball, Jack Clark. And Cody's got to finish that. No, straight at It's an amazing ball through. But just couldn't put a finishing move on it. I have to say, I've slowed down a bit with Jack Clark after a great start this season. Often is the way for me. Get off to a red-out start of a player and then I'll start to struggle. But Jack says, Gaffer, don't you remember what we used to do at Bournemouth together? As Galini keeps Palace still only down by one. Second goal is coming, though. It's all Liverpool right now. There's Trent. Oh, hits the crossbar. What a wonderful goal that would have been. So close to doubling up. Colwell dinks it out wide. There's Robertson. Oh, wonderful. Oh, brilliant. Oh, what a move. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. And Yunus Musa. Sue. Makes it too. What a wonderful little move that was there. You know, it's a running joke on this channel, man. Like, if you see me orchestrating a nice build-up, don't expect it to hit the back of the net because nine times out of ten, I'll fluff the finish. But this time around, the American does put the icing on the cake. Wonderful little move inside there. Great hold-up by Clark. Drags the man away, and that allows Musa the space to run into and finish home. 2-0, that would do it. Wonderful little team goal that. And there we go, back to back clean sheets and three wins in a row. All we can do is keep on winning to try and keep pace with Chelsea. And that's a big three points there at Anfield. There, there, there was actually a slight knock for Diaz right towards the end of the game, but I, I don't think it was anything more than a bruise as Man City overcame Bournemouth, Arsenal overcame Burnley. I've got to say, this might well be a four horse race this year. All the teams staying right next to each other. And after one advance in the calendar, Chelsea did slip up. So someone's taking points off them. Who was it? Who was it? It was. Where are they? Can't even see it. Oh, it's up there. 1-1 uh, one, one draw against Spurs on Christmas Day. That's the present I was after. So, the gap cut to two. Us and Man City together on goal difference and Arsenal behind by three points. Was, was there an injury for Diaz? I'm pretty sure I saw a little knock towards the end there. Oh, maybe not. Okay, fair enough. But we do see that Carl Valley is out of contract come the end of the season. I did, I did say I wasn't against letting him go on a free. He's, he's not growing anymore or, or barely growing. Most, basically, all of his games come from the bench now. And I'm, I'm not a massive, massive fan, but he is an 82-rated asset in the prime of his career. So letting him go on a free would be kind of silly. But... I don't know, man. Like he's he's not playing. He'd probably want to test his uh, his 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 toes into the free agent waters, if you will. If he does accept a pay cut, I will keep him for another two years just to have as an asset to sell in the summer if he want. But I'm not I'm not keeping him on eighty six grand a week or giving him an ex uh, an increase in his contract. Yeah, you got you got to take the pay cut if you want to stay. You got to take the pay cut. Let's try and get him down to seventy five grand a week if we can. There we go. So it'll take a pay cut for an extra two years, but. This is mainly just so we don't lose him on a free, and we'll try and sell in the summer. Moving on, match day 19 in the Premier League. After this game, we're at the official halfway stage, aiming to keep pace with the front runners, Chelsea. Another West London side, this time it's Fulham away at Craven Cottage. Come on, Liverpool. I think if you're looking for uh, starter teams in the Premier League for a career mode, by the way, you can get asked all the time for recommendations on teams to use. If you want a good starter team, I think Fulham are one of the absolute best right now. I really do. Been to Craven Cottage before. It's a lovely old ground. It's currently going through redevelopment. It was, that's a great stop by Bender on Diaz. Uh, with the main stand now being built, it backs onto the River Thames. You've got West London rivalries against Brentford and obviously Chelsea, the, the big one in the, in the Premier League as well. But London rivalries against all the capital sides. Um, and a side who... Is that going to be a... What's, I don't know what he's given there for. But um, yeah, a side with... Um, yeah, it's a good, great side to use. Long, long way to go to get them where you want to get them to, which is Champions League football. But great, great team to use for a starter side in career mode. As Robertson hits the deck, and that looks like another broken toe. 
great tackle by Diaz and a wonderful chance here. Trent, run, 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 run. If you didn't hear me the first three times, run. Well done. Really well done. That's what I wanted. Musa, oh, cracking finish. Yunus Musa, two into this Trent's forward run that allows us to get that goal there. Needed him to burst through the middle to find that space, which allows Musa to run in behind after he gets away from Harrison Reed. Lovely finish by the American. And Liverpool take the, uh, the early lead at Craven Cottage. Okay, all, all we can do, mate, is just keep on winning. Chelsea have finally slipped up, so you've got to try and take advantage here. Mackenzie to Diaz. Good turn. There's Trent. I see Musa at the far post. I'll go for him. What a ball. Oh, what a ball from Trent. And it's two for Musa. Oh, what a wonderful ball. That's in a week of left foot as well. And I'm starting to get the trajectory right on these balls now from Trent. We discussed it in the last episode when I clipped one for Gakpo in the winning terrain against Juve. They're very hard to pull off, I'm not going to lie. But starting to get the trajectory right a little bit better now. Trent's trademark balls over the top. And that is 2 0. And I think it is going to be four wins in a row in the league and five in all competitions. Liverpool flying high. Trent, wonderful turn now. Can he find some space to lift it? Oh, wonderful from Trent. And Clark hasn't scored in a while. I'd love for him to break his drought. Oh, and he puts it just wide of the post. Yeah, no goals in a while for Jack Clark. Really slowed down with him, but Liverpool aren't slowing down at all. It's another win. It's five on the trot in all competitions. If you count the Rangers sim. And it is three clean cheats in a row and four wins on the trot in the Premier League as well. Yeah, Liverpool right now absolutely flying and exactly what we need to do to keep pace with Chelsea. And you might have seen at the end of the game there, Andy Robertson was hobbling. So I'm going to assume it's not a bruise, but yep, broken toe. Andy Robertson done for three months and joining Curtis Jones in the treatment room. That is a big blow. We can shift McKenzie to, to left back and shift Alexander out to right back. But it means there's going to be two of our best three players through the middle absent for the next three months. That's a, that's a big blow for the Scott there. And has this opened the door for Kirkes to return? Well, who knows? I guess we'll consider it. But anyway, the halfway stage in the season. Keep pace with Chelsea. We do. We cut the gap on them two goal difference after another slip up from the Blues. And it means that the top three are all separated by just the GD. Yep, it's going to be an incredibly tight title race with the top five only separated by seven points. Arsenal right now are holding off Newcastle for fourth place. And the Magpies in fifth. Manchester United sixth. West Ham seventh and the other top three in the top 10 are Everton Spurs and Leeds United down the bottom of the table with our former team Bournemouth are really struggling this year only seven wins in 19 and in 12 and the bottom three themselves are Wolves Burnley and Sheffield United with just the nine points thus far as for the individual statistics well Harry Kane continues to dominate whatever league he's in in terms of goals 16 and 19 but the Red Devils are still far off the top four right now Rodrigo second with Martinelli in third Madison and Foden wrap up the top five uh, the fact we don't have a single Liverpool player in the top 15 is pretty damning. We do have three on seven apiece. Curtis Jones, Cody Gakpo and Jack Clark. But we need someone to take the reins in the second half of the season and start scoring more. Gakpo trying to retain that assist title. That was seven in 19. Trent's got five in 19 though, averaging over one in every five. We've got Curtis Jones in there with five in 15. That's one in three. And Jack Clark is also in the top 20 as well. So sharing the ball around nicely this season. And Alisson right now going for back-to-back goal gloves 9 in 19 not not on pace to equal the record he equaled last season of 24 but looking to win it back to back this season and as the January transfer window does open and Tyler Morton completes his deal to Rangers for a small transfer fee, um, obviously money's not the issue. We can sign anyone we want in this January window. I don't want to spend all of that quarter of a billion, obviously, but we still can buy whoever we want. And I did say, if we do want to compete for the treble, with the injuries we're going to get, the fixture congestion, the tired legs, we, we probably are going to need to add to this squad. It's gotten thinner now. We've got two senior players down. Yeah, I, I think we're going to need to sign at least one, possibly two players. If not for the starting 11, then definitely for the squad. If you want to compete for a treble, you need the depth. And right now, we just don't really have that. Right, following game, first one of January, big one too. Newcastle away in the North East, aiming to keep our winning run going and possibly go top of the Premier League. Let's get it done. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, I have to wonder if the door is now open for Milos Kerkes to come in. We we do need a successor for Andy Robertson. And the plan was to move McKenzie there to left back, where he'll start this game. And then look to bring in a right back. But, I mean, McKenzie's 
played 98% of his games at right back and been brilliant. So maybe. Oh, what a touch by Matthias Tell and a finish past a sliding Colwood on the line as well. Maybe the Hungarian should join in this January window and will start the successor for Robertson search right now. Or maybe we'll leave him till next season. I, I don't know. I, I never like to sign more than one player from the same club in the same season. I don't know why. I, I just, I, 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 I don't know. I just don't like to totally raid a club completely unless they've been relegated, you know? Levi. So Ibrahima. Still down by one. Trent, keep running. Oh, what a ball, Eunice. And speaking of balls, Trent Alexander-Arnold. You know, he's uh, pretty much always sublime. Someone get on the end of this. Cody Gakpo. Yes! With the finish. And he's really starting to pick his form up, man. Not, not quite how I drew that move up there. But the, the pass through by Musa was stupendous to send Trent down the right-hand side. You know, he's, he's like my friend group. I say this in every save, in every team. There's always one player who may not get the credit, may not get all the love. And oftentimes has to accept a rotation squad role. Whenever he plays, he always does a great job and plays in a variety of positions. Yunus Musa is that guy for me, man. Play him anywhere. CDM, CM, right back, slightly further forward. Never lets me down. As Eberechi finds Cody and just couldn't pull the trigger. Trent sent down the right. No one to cross to in the middle, though. He's got Purvis on his back. And there's the delivery headed away. And Clark gets it in. Gapo can shoot. Boobs, I trust him to win that with him. And Jack's going to try his luck. Oh, he's caught a keeper out with an absolute scorcher. He missed a penalty here in the Carabao Cup last 16 loss in the shootout to Newcastle. And as a former Black Cat, you know the Newcastle fans were loving that moment. But they're certainly not loving this one. Trubin off his line. And Jack Clark catches him out. With a wonderful half volley into the top corner. Yeah, poor positional centre from the keeper, but great awareness from Clark. Liverpool complete the comeback and lead in the northeast. One minute of normal time. Diaz lifts it long. Kubo into the middle. Last chance. Last chance. Last chance. Oh, what a finish. Stroked into the bottom corner. And in a thriller at St. James's. Newcastle leave the late to claim a point. What a wonderful finish that was, though, with the outside of the right boot. Allison beaten 2 2. And after the game, we do have a bid here for Jarrell Kwanzaa. What we certainly can't afford to do right now is, is see anyone else leave the club. Kwanzaa's grown brilliantly, too, to 81 overall now at 24, and he's, he's still getting better as well. And with the two injuries we've got now, he's, he's going to get even more game time. Um, currently in this uh, in this Liverpool team. Let's put him on balance. Actually, there, is there going to be a quick one? Yes, there is indeed. Sweeper, sweeper. Uh, or defensive centre-half. Which one does the heading? Oh, there we go. Sweeper do heading? It does indeed. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what am I talking about? I don't know. We've got the FA Cup third round uh, against Watford. Though. Let's dive into that one and try and bounce back here. Our winning run ended, but this should be a reasonably safe passage through to the last 32. Championship Hornets here at Anfield. Let's bounce back with a big win and make the fourth round with these. Come on, Liverpool. Oh, is there an injury there? There is indeed. Felix has just gone down. And now, now the injuries are starting to come. We, we upped the injury sliders in the last episode. And I feel we needed to because we'd only had the one to start the season off with camera. And with a small squad playing Champions League football and aiming to go far in the Cups as well. It's only right, but that is a, uh, a knock for Athena Jan. I doubt it will be a five-day one. As he receives this ball, sees he's A running through the middle. Couldn't get to him, keeps hold of it. And Eberechi puts it just wide. Yeah, we'll have that, we'll have that, we'll have that. And now Carvalho. Oh, I just wonder for a second there. Is that going to be another injury? It is indeed. Now Carvalho going down. Now Trent hits the deck. Thankfully, he gets straight back to his feet. But first to Fina Jean and now Carvalho. Okay, they're backup players. But even so, players are now starting to drop like flies. Not ideal as we uh, continue to push for the treble this year. With Jarrell finding Clark. Now into the middle is Ize. And Fabio has Eberechi through the middle and Ben out wide. Come on. Let's get ourselves a goal. No, oh, come on. Oh, no, come on. Don't don't go a goal down here. Spreer into the middle. Oh, no, I don't believe it. Watford in front right before the break. Now, this would be an absolutely massive choke. 
Got play two players going down, and we're a goal down right before the break as well. Okay, all right, we, we've got to turn this around in the second half, because going out here is unacceptable, man. Yeah, we're still going for the Premier League. Yeah, we're into the last 16 of the Champions League, but this is not going to cut it. Jack, we're going to step in field. Rafinha Jan, great control. Carvalho denied. And Watford will clear. There's the two players carrying Knox linked up, but we couldn't convert. Better start to the second half, though. It's too passive in the first. It's got to be... Oh, there we go. We play on there. Ref doesn't blow for a free kick like I thought he would. And Musa finds an 11. I think that's a little bit lucky there, I must say. Oh, hi, my hands off an extent. I think that's a little bit lucky. That, to me, looked like a foul in the middle there by Eunice Musa. Or maybe it was just soft from the player he robbed. I'm not too sure. Personally, I thought it was a foul. Even so, we'll take a bit of luck. Musa fires in the leveler. And now let's turn this game on its head. Come on. Right, this might be the last chance we get here, so... Oh, the far post was Clark coming in, but just couldn't get it over the keeper. Corner to the middle, headed away, and I think that's probably going to do it. He's onside there, Clark, because I'm out on the line. Ben McKenzie straight to the keeper. Salah, can he finish? No scramble and cleared. What for the escape and the death to force a replay. Oh, I'm absolutely blown that. Two injuries, could only get a leveler and not a winner, but... Doggy defending, last ditch of the death, and the Hornets hang on for a replay. My least favourite thing about cup football, replays. Can't stand them, man, honestly. And I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling confident heading back to Vicarage Row with them playing quite well right now uh, in, the, uh, in the championship. And, oh, yay, yeah, please, please bury these injuries, man. I don't mind about the length. But we got four players with broken toes now. Carvalho and Athena Jan. Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to quickly uh, downgrade the injury sliders back to where we did have them originally, which is 77. Four players now down with broken toes. Seriously, man. What are your boots made out of? Nylon? Well, let's do a couple more games today. I think we might end on that replay at Vicarage Road. Following game, Leicester at home. No wins in our last two in all competitions and after a draw against Newcastle. Needing to win here to keep pace with the top two. Come on, Liverpool. That signing with Milos Kerkes is now looking a lot more tempting. <laughs> Oh dear, four broken toes, come on EA, this is, and I mentioned this before man, like I don't mind the length, I don't mind the length of injuries at all man, that's totally fine, but the variation is, is the problem, there's just too many bruised shoulders and broken toes, you know, EA, have, they've, got, they've got to change it up, they've got to vary it, you know, because it's uh, just not realistic and it really does break away the immersion, when you can imagine four players sat in the treatment room all, with <laughs> as the, Shot hits the bar and Dennis Zakari turns in a rebound with, with their left or right foot out. <laughs> Four doctors just taking a look at all and saying, yep, looks broken to me. Dennis Zakari heads home and Liverpool, where they were flying and now they're falling. Might be set for three games in a row without a win. Okay, this is, this is worrying now. This is worrying. And I don't like Trent at right back. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. I need him through the middle, man. That's where we're getting the best out of him. There's Konata Kidayan. There we go. He's a shot blocks. We'll win another corner. 20 minutes in. There's plenty to gain to go. Plenty of the gain to go. So not, not panicking. You know, we, we came from behind against Newcastle to lead, although we didn't close it out. We can do the same here. There's Clark's got space to shoot. We know he can. Shot block gets it back. Cody Gapo, great touch. Come on. Brilliant finish. And there is the level. A whole hour to play. No need to panic. Where you going? Where you going? Add that, thank you. Keep, keep running, Diaz. Oh, what the? He's there. Go to the ball. Why were you just standing there? Alisson makes say, Why were you just standing there, Everett? You go towards the ball. I'm starting to get a bit angry now, if you, if you can't tell. So, apologies. I'll try and calm myself down. But I need this win. I need this win. Oh, well held up, Everett. And, oh, I should have finished that. That's not his ace fight, that's mine. Poor finish, still 1-1. 22 minutes to go, still time as we look for a winning goal. And he's a Provides it and says, Gaffer, zip your lips together, son. I know what I'm doing. As to the boys with the celebration. 2-1, comeback complete. Thank you, Everetchi. 
And a chance for Leicester. Ball whipped in. Stefan heads up. And don't just get it on. There we go. There we go. There we go. And that is going to do it. It might actually turn into a ball through to Diaz. Can you believe it? Luis Diaz drills in the dagger. And Liverpool close it out. Well, that is not how I drew it up. But listen, I'll take it. Liverpool returns to winning ways. We were a 3-1 victory at Anfield. I just wanted to get the ball far forward as far as I could. And it turned out to be an amazing headed through ball assist. Collector's item and then some. Liverpool close out the win. And on the back of the big win there, Man City saying to Bubakar, that was unconvincing. Comes to the Etihad and you have a better chance of winning this title. But I'm going to say no. Obviously, camera's going nowhere. Only being here 18 months. And if I'm going to sell him anywhere, it's not going to be to a title rival. So, yeah, I think we'll play the, uh, the final game today. This will be the FA Cup uh, third round replay. Desperately, desperately, desperately to make this through here. Because a cup set in the last 32 is not going to go down well with the board. Watford away at a Vicarage Road aiming to avoid that cup set and make it through to the fourth round at the second attempt. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, strong lineup for the game, man. Taking absolutely no chances heading into this one. Yes, a couple of stars will get the night off, but for the most part, really, really strong team. And going out tonight in the first round we enter to a championship side. That is not going to go down well with the board. So we've got to win at whatever cost. Cody Gakpo gives us the perfect start. Seven minutes in here at Hertfordshire. We're in from Diaz. Gakpo, wonderful turn. Eberechi bends one. Oh, beautiful goal. Beautiful, beautiful goal. And it's 2-2 two two for our number 10. Yep, getting some more minutes now due to the injuries. And he was a key member of our squad last year. This season, minutes reduced slightly, mainly due to the signing of Jack Clark. But he's still as good as ever. And that is the perfect start. 2 it up on the challenger side away. And unlike at Anfield, we ain't, we ain't going to struggle in this one. We're, we're making it through tonight. Come on. Well, I'll be honest, certainly wasn't very good in the first contest. But... In the replay, got the early two goals and took my foot off the gas pedal after we took the early two goal lead as well. Conserved energy, controlled the game from there. And Watford kind of just thought, do you know what? Forget this. Like, we're going for promotion to the Premier League. Let Liverpool through to the fourth round. And there we go. Progress into the fourth round. Back-to-back -back wins. Hoping to get back on track. And to end today's episode off, we'll see who we've got in that last 32. Hoping for another EFL side at home, hopefully in the fourth round. Oh, it's right there. There we go. Well, it's, it's a home, but it's certainly at an EFL side. Arsenal in the last 32 at Anfield. And that will be coming at the start of of the next episode. What a tough tie that is going to be. But I'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. So big fan of you, you enjoyed it. If you had then please do drop a like on stuff. You'll have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Crimmer mode. We'll try and get back to form in the Premier League and stay top of the table. But at the remainder of the January window, we might make, well, we will make a new signing. We need to, to improve our squad depth with the injury crisis. And I'll try and squeeze in the first leg of that Champions League last 16 tie against Real Sociedad as well. Have a great day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.